but you can simultaneously use uh, all of the spectrum where it would be mission dependent. And among the uh, 45 plus patents uh, include that capability. So let's go back to the market and let's look at uh, what would be a typical operator. Now I'm just using this as a nominal example of a typical mobile operator of medium to large size. They'll have existing macros, let's say tens of thousands of macros, in this case we use 40,000. And they'll, those macro sites will be of some vintage, 3G, 4G, LTE, but let's assume they've upgraded to LTE, and they will be provisioned with some amount of adequate backhaul. Every operator in the world is going to want to start from there. They're going to start from where they already have uh, a known position, and they're going to extend out. Uh, there's some people talking about doing UE relay from there. Um, there's people talking about going from you know microwave down to the next location where the small cell is. But the point being is every one of those macros gets upgraded for LTE for data, upgraded for LTE, upgraded for, for uh, LTE A, and then you begin to use a separate spectrum, most likely, to underlay that with other devices. So start from there, reach the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Every device now wants Metro Ethernet. Backhaul is just, wireless backhaul is just over the air Metro Ethernet. When you say fiber, what you're really buying is Metro Ethernet that's derived out of a light pipe. If you're buying microwave radio, you know, you're getting Metro Ethernet. Metro Ethernet comes with an SLA and a provisioning guarantee. That's what all of these will want. The problem is there's a physical gap that exists from where the Metro Ethernet for to operate the cell is and where you want to put your small cell. So what we've provided is a company that says, regardless of where you want it, that's the freedom of location piece, put that where you want it, we can get you from your existing macro, or we can loop you back to any other provider in an urban setting that's likely within 500 meters to a kilometer. And there's probably more than one of them. So having a radio capability that says, don't think about it from here to here, think about it, is put that where you need it, and there's multiple ones of these, and with the right combination of radios, you can actually foster and enforce competition on the optic side. Force these net providers to compete for that business. And the radio actually enables it. If you're going to take 40,000 macros, upgrade them, and a lot of those don't also have a problem having fiber to them. So getting backhaul to them that's adequate is also a problem to solve. But once you start to do hundreds of thousands of small cells, and I know I'm in Europe, so forgive me for quoting, I'll try to do it in both places. It's just that right now, recently in the US, uh, Sprint's been very vocal about what they intend to do, and it's eminent that they're gonna upgrade somewhere around 15 to 20,000 macros, and they're saying they're gonna deploy somewhere between 50 to 100,000 small cells over the next 18 months to become the number one uh, network in the United States. So think about it, if you're going to do that, every one of those has to be thinking about deployability, scalability, uh, and the performance of each individual site. And that's a Herculean task when you break that down. If someone's claiming they're gonna do that over 18 months, or 24 months, well, take 100,000 divided by 24, you're talking about thousands per month, hundreds per day. That's an army of people, that's a lot of execution and precision. Each site can't be an individual planning exercise. It's got to be formulaic. It's got to be reduced to something that's repeatable and reliable and clearly affordable. So what would that look like? And the reality is it has to look like this. It has to. To deploy tens of thousands, thousands, tens of thousands of anything, it has to be sort of cookie cutterish, if you will. I think the industry, all of us in this room have been coming to these meetings for years now. I think collectively, I think we've done a good job. I think there's been advances across the across the world. Walking, Eric's has done great work with poles. The RAN community has done fantastic work miniaturizing the RAN. And I, I think uh, Fastback and all of our colleagues in the backhaul community have demonstrated the art of the possible and shown that there are some real ways to do this. So if you say nominally someone's going to have a pole, they have some varying height, all they really want on that pole, whatever flavor the pole is, is they want a RAN and they want a backhaul. They don't want a cell site router. They might want even AC power straight in. They want to have the power simple. They want to use the simplest, lowest cost uh, labor they can get. They want to not have to have complicated, expensive, or sophisticated labor forces. They've got to be able to replicate that. 
the time to deploy, from the time you decide to stab this in the ground, erect it, commission it, turn it up, get the benefit out of it, is super important. The all-in cost of this, I believe, is trending towards sub-20,000 US, for sure, and obviously they'd love that to be much, much lower. They're going to want the flexibility to do any topology, it means when you go from this one to the next one, or its relationship back uh, to the macro, they're going to want to guarantee that they're not constrained by the topology. So backhaul and RAN can't be constrained. They're going to want to know that the RAN and the, and the backhaul are simply looking at each other like uh, a, two peers, two data networking peers. Fastback doesn't consider themselves a radio company, they consider ourselves a switch company where one of the ports on our device is actually a really powerful radio. That, that's fundamental truth of the company. And so we look at it and say, if that's really looking for a Metro Ethernet socket, we provide that Metro Ethernet socket with a guaranteed SLA, and the other side of this is a radio port, but it's a switch port that gets back to the Metro Ethernet. Just that simple. Because you're dealing with a lot of variability in this path, it's undeterministic. Sometimes it's line of sight, sometimes it's line of sight. Sometimes it's far, short, sometimes you've got to go through trees, sometimes you bounce off buildings, uh, I think there'll be people later today that'll talk about their experiences with some of those things. It's undeterministic, therefore your ability to take the uncertainty out is critical. If you're a backhaul provider, you've got to help them predict what the performance is going to be. You can't get out there and try to find out. So prediction tools become super important. Minimizing the number of managed elements. Get it down to just two. The ability to put this pole where you need it or to put these assets on anything that's not the pole. I said earlier, okay? and then obviously anything that you put here and works with this has got to be fully integrated, fully interoperable, and fully compatible uh, with everything. In the case of Fastback, we've integrated with everyone's core um, and proven uh, to do so. So that's kind of what we found out over deployability and uh, the need for flexibility. So what I'd like to do is tell you, actually, the end. We open up for questions. This is who Fastback is. That's what we're about. <laughs>